basis IMF should ask government how it has managed natural resources. And then there's a very interesting story. Doc fired for prescribing ice cream and video games to a child with sore throat. Doc has been fired for prescribing <laughs> ice cream and video games to a child with sore throat. I have heard, see, they should ask him why he prescribed those This is not even in Ghana. So let's not... Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, let's yeah, but in the, 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 the graphic, there's yes, a story there two about doctors two doctors who have been suspended. Who have been suspended. Yes, I'll, 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 I'll come to that. Like, there's also a, doc, a big doctor story in the fourth estate where Hefra has launched investigations into two South Odoko clinics for employing quack midwives. They've actually been following this story for a while. They said regulatory bodies failed patients of South Odoko mm. Clinic because they were using unqualified people in a story they call the quack midwife. Mm -hmm. So the HEFRA, which is the uh, sort of the body that regulates health service providers, has begun investigations into the matter. City Business News, we are confident of inter IMF conditions for fiscal consolidation, as finance minister. COPEC predicts marginal drop in first window of June. This is pure pricing. And then ASEP pushes for research in Africa's energy sector. That story also making rounds on our business website. Let's get into the details of the stories. Okay, so let's start off with this story about um, the, uh, what do you call it, the Best, uh, Dome Level. Dome Level, Dome yes, Level, yes. yes. Daniel Yao, yeah. Dome Level. There's Understood. a full interview on citynewsroom.com. Yeah, that's right. The story is on the front page of the Ghanaian Times, mm -hmm. and the details on page 12. And uh, Malik Suleimana says that by a unanimous decision, the Supreme Court yesterday declared that the decision by the President, Danado Danko Ekufuado, to ask Daniel Yao, Dome Level, to proceed on accumulated leave in 2020 is unconstitutional. Now, the panel, presided over by Justice Nene Amegache again, declared that the directive appointing Acting Auditor General, Mr. Johnson Ikuyamwa Asiedu, when the Substantive Auditor General had not been removed, is unconstitutional and null and void. Mm. Now, Nana Asante Bedietu, the Secretary to the President, signed the green letter addressed to Mr. Yao Domalavo on uh, June 29 which instructed the former Auditor General to proceed on 167 days leave, starting from Wednesday, the 1st of July, 2020. Now, following the directive, Mr. Domalevo now retired, um, you know, went on leave, and then there were issues. Um, yeah. The civil society organizations took the matter to court, mm -hmm. and yesterday, the uh, Supreme Court gave its judgment and held that um, you know, the directive was unlawful. What well, is actually unfortunate is the timing. Is the timing. Because you know, the guy has already gone home yeah. and the damage has already been done. So basically, exactly. you're saying your judgment is just academic. Yeah. Now, I think our court should do... I know that there are, there are so many backlogs of cases. The backlog of cases is huge. Mm. And I know that, you know, every case has some priority. But let's do well to be time yours in how... The, the man himself has been speaking. Mm. He, he has slammed the, the president, president for disrespecting the, the law. law. He, the, uh, speaking in an interview with Howard Idrisu on CTTV's 2020 News Network, he said he was disappointed that the president who prides himself as a human rights activist would breach the constitution with impunity. Then he says, justice delayed is justice denied. The justices of the Supreme Court know better. From my point of view, it's better late than never. So from now on going, it will not be repeated on any constitutional body or any auditor general. So that's mm -hmm. what makes me happy. Now, seeing the Supreme Court... They've struck out a law that allowed government to impose restrictions on COVID-19. Again, mm -hmm. you can say, at least you can say the horse has bolted, but again, for precedent's sake <clears throat> and for future purposes, <clears throat> the Supreme Court has struck out the law that allowed the president to impose restrictions as part of the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Mm -hmm. Now, the government at the height of the pandemic caused the legislation of the imposition of the Restriction Act, which gave power to the president to restrict human activity for the purposes of fighting the pandemic. Law professor and human rights advocate Kwajo Apiaje Etuya, along with eight others, dragged the government to the Supreme Court. The applicants sued the Attorney General, claiming the directives pursuant to the Act, such as the closure of schools, restrictions of movements, were unconstitutional. Now, the Apex Court, in delivering <clears throat> its ruling, described the Act as null and void, and essentially upheld the plea, or you can <clears throat> say the, the, the position mm -hmm. of the, the nine, can you call them appellants? Or what do you no, 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 these are what? plaintiffs. Plaintiffs, yeah. Charlie, this your law is heavy. It's a lot of complications. <laughs> Plaintiff. Yeah. So, yes, two Supreme Court cases, mm -hmm. Nathan, graphic. And, yes. and quickly, before you go, let me just mention, you know, we've been talking about alternative punishment for people who yes, feel yes. minor, minor yes. things. There's a story here on page three of the Ghanaian Times that says, court cautions man to be of good behavior. Mm. Now, the Jassy Kine, uh, or the circuit court in, in Jassy Kine has convicted a 19-year-old self-employed, Atta Prosper Yao, 
signed a bond to be of good behavior for two years for stealing a 35 kilogram uh, bag of dried beans, um, you know, cocoa beans. He was now, what? He, he, so they 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 they, they, they convicted him. Okay. Uh, they, they cautioned him to be of good behavior. A bag of a beans. bag of dried uh, cocoa know, cocoa beans. <laughs> yeah, totally. So he would have gone for two years. Oh yeah, yeah like he would have slept his eyes more. Yeah. So we encouraged him. So they cautioned him. Yes, yes, yes. They should let him weed. Yeah, you well, win the plot no, no, of the cocoa yeah, farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, no, they should like the way they do it is when we're in secondary school. Uh, they will just point here, point here, and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it gives you cutlass. Yes. <laughs> like Sometimes we touch light. <laughs> Disco <laughs> weed. <laughs> Charlie, do weed at night. Charlie, Nathan, let's come to this. Anyway, page sixteen of the Daily Graphics uh-huh. says Confanochi suspends two doctors for extortion. Mm. Now, two doctors at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital in Kumasi have been suspended for mm. extorting money from patients. The two were each given a month suspension without pay. While one has already served his suspension, the other will start from today. Um, this was disclosed by the CEO of the hospital, Professor Otre Yao Adai Mensa. Okay. And, he, and he said this yesterday when he paid a curtsy call on the Asante Hine mm. for 2 4 said to 2 the second mm-hmm. at the Menshia Palace. The visit was to introduce himself and the management of the hospital to the Asante Hine since he assumed office six months ago. Meanwhile, still on the health sector, Quack Midwife, how regulatory bodies field patients of South Odoko clinics? And this is part one and two of a story where the fourth estate chronicled how an unlicensed midwife whose 30-year history hmm. of practice had resulted in the death of at least two babies within a year and the laissez-faire attitude of owners hmm. of the facilities she worked in. In part three, they revealed how the new generation medical center mm-hmm. provided the Greater Accra Regional Health Directorate with four statistics about its operations. And the story basically says health sector regulators are designed to curtail quacks like Francis Kakwe, who practiced midwifery for more than 30 years oh, wow. without any formal training. Hey. Should the law work as expected, the system should have stopped her from entering the health sector or fished her out within a short period of time. Wow. Now we are told the HEFRA, which is the regulatory body for health service mm-hmm. providers, has launched an investigation into two South Odoko clinics for employing quack midwives. Okay, that's a serious the, regional, the Registrar of Hefra, Dr. Philip Bano, said the agency on Tuesday dispatched a team to the New Generation Medical Center where Ms. Kui worked for almost three decades mm-hmm. and the Adam Family Specialist Clinic where she found a new job after she was sacked from the former. I think, I think we need a body that should be responsible for checking. That's the body. It's called Hefra. That's Hefra. Hefra. They are yeah. there fully. They yeah, are. That, but if beyond, I didn't even have an act. <clears throat> beyond that, I'm talking about act a more eight general... Act uh-huh. I'm talking about a more general institution. We don't need like, anything. We need people to check the need people to do their work. The, it's just, you, you to shock you that when you go into the act, everything you are is inside already. You know, I understand that. What I'm saying is that it should go beyond merely the Let me read it to Section 15B of the Hefra Act allows HEFRA to deny the renewal of a health facilities license if it has reasonable grounds to believe that the continued operation of the practice by the licensee <laughs> will create a risk to public health and safety uh-huh. or is indecent. Uh-huh. And then if you go in, they talk a lot about the kind of people they can hire and things. Uh-huh. So, uh, so, yeah, so I'm talking about a rigorous verification of what people claim they are. They should do their So work. if I come to you and say I have masters in ABC, yeah, but the, 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 body the, that the sector you are care. working for. So you see, you can't have a general body. If you say you are a master's and you are in the educational sector, the people employing the educational sector mm-hmm. should verify. If you're in the health sector, the health sector should check. See, it's so, sector specific. No, if somebody no. says it's a lawyer, uh-huh. who will check if I'm a lawyer? Uh-huh. It's the general legal uh-huh. counsel. Uh-huh. You see, well, uh, with the, but the way I'm thinking, I think we are saying the same thing, except that mm-hmm. we are, you, are, you are trying to, you know, pigeonhole it. Mm. I want a, an umbrella body so that you can come to me and say, verify no, this. No, but you won't get it because <laughs> they will pay more salary to the people. We don't want, <laughs> yeah. we don't want anything like that. Let's do politics. Yes. There's a story here that says Alan Cash affirms presidential ambition. You will sing it. <laughs> Charlie, it was on every radio station. Yeah. Yeah. The, the story by Max Olofuri says former Minister for Trade and Industry Alan Kojo Chermanting yesterday yeah. officially joined the race to contest in the November presidential primary of the New Patriotic Party. Yeah, yeah. Now, the nomination form was picked up on his behalf by uh, a group of market queens mm-hmm. from the Ashanti and Greater Accra regions who, on their own volition, embarked on that journey for him. And the group members, uh, numbering about 30, were mm-hmm. dressed in beautiful traditional clothes and mm-hmm. regalia, 
to depict their stat uh, status as queens. Now, they introduce themselves as leaders of the various uh, traders' association in the Kumasi Central Market, as well as here in the mm -hmm. uh, Greater Accra and Tema markets. Mm -hmm. Now, he goes on to say the group said they were up or they were made up of uh, t uh, tomato sellers, mm -hmm. fish sellers, Charlie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. pepper, pepper sellers, <laughs> onion sellers, and a host of other items so, so. at the market. I mean, these are the ordinary people. Uh, the people we yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Alan say he started. And now also we're told that Baumia is to start um He will uh, launch his campaign soon. Exactly. Again, the st same story, uh, the same gentleman who wrote the, the Alan story uh, says that the vice president, <clears throat> Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, mm -hmm. will officially launch his uh, campaign this month, the Chronicle has launched. Now, though the exact date and location uh, for the much-awaited uh, outdooring are yet to be announced, information indicates that it will be uh, in a few days um, mm -hmm. after filing uh, his nomination uh, papers. Uh, and they say that that will happen in, in, in two weeks or so. Now, the Chronicle has also reliably guarded that the vice president's campaign launch mm -hmm. may happen in either Ashanti mm -hmm. or Central Region okay. on a weekend. So he announced the presidential you know, effort that he wants to put up in uh, water okay. region. You, I don't know whether that was the that official sense. announcement. I think that the, the journalist just managed to get a scoop. Uh -huh, yes. Because so, I think he was walking away from the program, and uh -huh. I think, you know, sometimes you can approach a, a politician yeah. and then... You say the, yeah, yeah. Because he, he didn't officially announce it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, the journalist got a good scoop. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So that's so good for us. If you go to Asin North, mm -hmm. two stories related to that constituency. One that says the by-election is set for June 27. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Electoral Commission has given us a date finally. Mm -hmm. Now, following James Jachikwesen's um, removal, let me put it that way, mm -hmm. from the seat and, mm -hmm. and following the declaration of the seat being vacant, mm -hmm. the by-election is now set. But Jachikwesen seems to be facing some other legal issues because mm -hmm. the Daily Guide on that same page uh, page three is saying that he's facing up to 10 years imprisonment in hard labor if found guilty, uh, convicted and sentenced for the charge of perjury mm. and other criminal charges leveled against him by the office of the attorney general. All right, let me take you to Napo. Energy minister denies celebrating birthday in Monaco. Story says the spokesperson for the minister, Dr. Opoku Prempe, uh, Kofi Abrefafina, has denied claim that the minister celebrated his 55th birthday in Monaco. In a press release, Mr. Abrefafina said the media publication was, quote, a total fabrication, unquote, and that Dr. Prempe was in Ghana as a birthday. In fact, it says that the minister attended a meeting of the economic management team on that day. So I think that can be verified. But well, where is he now? I don't know. On the 23rd of May, which marked the 55th birthday of Dr. Opoku Prempe, I think the fact was that he said he celebrated his birthday outside. And the guy said he was <laughs> no, in Ghana. He, he, let's try it. No, let's not shift the question. To where is he, no, the question is not where he's in now. The, the story didn't say that. <laughs> today is today is first June. The story didn't say that he's in uh, Monaco first June. The story said he wrote your birthday. What does the story say that he celebrated his birthday? Yes. His birthday, the exact yes. day, yes. outside the country, or he celebrated his birthday outside. There are two different things. So well, can you repeat that? The, the, if you the, say you, you you would have celebrated your birthday, in uh, other words, you deferred celebration. Ah, uh, so yeah, so I say, oh, Charlie, this I don't know. The, the, the uncle so, so the paper, what did the story report that day? Uh -huh. So no, the story actually emerged yesterday. Yes, that's what uh -huh. I'm saying. So do you have the story? That what? Where he celebrated his birthday story? Um, no, but it was um, it was one of the papers. Even though the anchor, yeah. if you remember what the paper the, said, I don't the, know. The, mm, okay. But it go, the anchor gives details of the full statement signed by Kofi Abrefafina. All right, let me give you this you one remember. before. Okay, so here's the story. Uh, mm -hmm. It's on Ghana Web, and it says that Dr. Matthew Poku, Prempe, Minister for Energy and Member of Parliament for Manchester South Constituency, is said mm -hmm. to have taken a private aircraft from Dubai to Monaco on the uh, French Rivera uh, to celebrate his 55th uh, fifth birthday. Mm. Now, this uh, was noted in a daily guide. Yes. You know, article uh, so published. Daily on, guide. Yes, it was yes, the so daily, the daily guide. guide. So, you, you know, there's some trouble. So, between. you know what? Let's get the daily guide because mm -hmm. now this this website is reporting yeah, what the what, daily guide uh -huh. said. So, let's get the original story. Uh -huh. Be that as it may, mm -hmm. the spokesperson says, that's on the birthday, true. he was at EMT. Yes. So, okay. for now, let's take it there. Mm -hmm. Veteran actor Kofi Ajololo pays glowing tribute to the late Amata Edu. And I'm sure you heard this yesterday, yeah, that uh, Christiana Ama Edu, born 23rd March 1942, died at the age of 83 Wednesday morning after a short illness. She championed the cause of Africa, dedicated her literary work and activism to shedding light on injustice faced by Africans, both on the continent and in the diaspora. Her piercing writings reflected a deep understanding of the historical context and systemic factors that perpetuate racial inequality 
and exploitation. And ever since news of her death was announced through a family statement, many prominent people have paid tribute to her. And Kofi Ajololo, speaking to GhanaWeekend.com, mm -hmm. said that he was distraught. Another great Pan-Africanist and in African intellectual has fallen. Her books include that of other great African intellectuals. And he basically said that uh, Amar Taedu stands tall in the pantheon of thinkers from Africa. Okay. I wanted to end with the ice cream story. Oh, the doctor <laughs> prescribing us. The story, story is from my journal. I don't because... know whether tomorrow we issue a statement to say it's not true. A Brazilian doctor recently lost his job after allegedly prescribing chocolate ice cream and video guy. game to a nine-year-old with a sore throat and flu-like symptoms. Hmm. On May 18, Priscilla da Silva Ramos, a 37-year-old mother from Osasco mm -hmm. in Sao Paulo, took her nine-year-old child for a checkup at a state-owned clinic mm -hmm. after he started feeling sick and vomiting. Mm -hmm. She claimed that the doctor there was very unprofessional, asking her if she looked at her child's throat, but not bothering to do it himself. Instead of actually examining the minor, the unnamed doctor allegedly started writing a prescription for the drugs like amoxicillin, ibuprofen, diprone something something and something something, as well as ice cream and daily sessions of gaming. Okay, he, he started writing a prescription without explaining my, examining my son, without looking at his throat, without examining his chest, without anything, the outraged mother said. <laughs> then, asked, then he asked my son if he liked ice cream. He said yes. He asked if chocolate or strawberry. My son said chocolate. <laughs> But I never imagined that he wrote ice cream on the prescription. But he did prescribe ice cream and daily sessions of the mobile phone game Free Fire. <laughs> so that is just to help with the taking of the medication. Because if you add the ice cream to Amazaslin... How do you take cold ice cream? I don't know what Amazaslin does, though. The, the hair in Brazil should get this much. The hair This is the City Breakfast Show. The city's biggest conversation. Ah, you know you papa see that? And it's Ricky Tika. Hey, papa! Bobo! Papa! Oh, you lost Bobo! <laughs> ah, Bobo, so have your engine now. It is half man, half amazing. Thanks to Quartz and you. Don't feel better energy. Can't touch this. Actually, guys, so Sancho's engine just died like that. Yes, so Somebody managed to convince him that there is a better engine oil than Quartz. And he switched. Ah, Sancho Panza now, which engine oil can be better than Quartz? No other, my guy. Quartz with its age-resistant technology, it keeps your engine yoga, 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 yoga. <laughs> Now you know. Have you guys seen the new bottle design? It's superb. Quartz 9000 from Total Energy's DA improves fuel efficiency. Why do you think Mr. Mane and Logo so have taken the Quartz Nation movement World Cup like that? Mr. Mane, sorry, sorry, sorry. Chairman, no money. Chairman, hey, Chairman! Quartz, keep your engine younger. Or longer. Join the conversation on the City Breakfast Show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash city 97.3, Twitter at twitter.com forward slash city 973, and Instagram at instagram.com forward slash city 973 with the hashtag CityCBS. The City Breakfast Show. Rise above the noise. City Business News next, brought to you by MTN and Goyle. Nashi Kassisa is here with a bulletin. Good morning. Good morning, Bernard. Hello and welcome to the breakfast edition of the City Business News, proudly brought to you by MTN, Goyle, and powered by your most comprehensive business news website, citybusinessnews.com. Coming up, cost of doing business expected to go up from today following decision by the Public Utility and Regulatory Commission to approve new tariffs across board for all consumer groups. Also, government confident of meeting International Monetary Fund's no conditionalities for fiscal consolidation in its quest to revive the alien economy. <laughs> The details. The cost of doing business is expected to go up from today, June 1, following the Public Utilities and Regulatory Commission PURC's decision to approve new tariffs across board for all consumer groups. The PRC in an earlier statement said the decision was taken after a review for the second quarter of 2023. It also disclosed that the increase in the new the next adjustment window may be required, taking factors such as exchange rate, 
the rising cost of fuel and gas, inflation and the availability of natural gas. It further explained that a decision was taken to balance the prevention of extended power outages and the adverse implications on jobs and livelihoods while minimizing the impact of rate increases on consumers. Moving on, government has stated that it is certain of meeting the International Monetary Fund IMF's requirement for fiscal consolidation in its quest to ensure economic recovery. The IMF, in its report on Ghana's request for a $3 billion extended credit facility, attributed Ghana's economic challenges to weak domestic revenue mobilization efforts. The fund also noted that key policies under the authorities' program include large and front loaded fiscal consolidation to bring public finances back on a sustainable path, complemented by efforts to protect the vulnerable. Ken Oferiata made the revelation when he spoke at the Capital Market Days event organized by the MTN Group in South Africa. We came into government, you know, actually inherited an IMF program, supposed to take three or four years, and uh, within two years and a little, uh, we exited that. Um, so our capacity to do that, it's very clear to us. I, I think this is an existential crisis. It just brought things um, to a head, and that's where we are. Where we are. Um, so in terms of the confidence um, to be able to ensure that we follow through um, with what we've agreed with the IMF, um, the post-COVID um, program for economic growth is our program in which then um, the funds, um, structural benchmark, etc., were around that. And, and we believe that we can, uh, we can do it because we've done it before. And the numbers, um, 2017 to 2020, suggest the type of trajectory that we're on until these incidents um, that occurred. Um, so uh, very confident about what we have to do these 18 months. Ken Oferiata also revealed that the government has made some progress with workers on management of their pensions funds. And we still have to work um, with the pension funds. We have about $29 billion And really let them know that it's not in their best interest to be in government paper. 70% of their money is in government paper, and we need to change that. We also need to get them to use some of their resources in real investments, um, like toll roads, uh, airports, um, housing, you know, urban transportation, uh, which happens around the globe. So as a new thinking, and we hope that will come um, to the same place. Uh, but we did agree with them, uh, find ways to ensure that sustainability and help with macroeconomic stabilization um, and the economic recovery. Of course, that has been interpreted differently uh, from what we believe uh, to be the spirit of it um, to what is. But I think we are making headway in those discussions. We also have uh, independent power projects. So through December of last year, it's about $1.6 billion that we owed. I imagine um, through May, by the time we finish with the discussions, it will be about $2 billion uh, in which we need to find ways um, of ensuring that going forward, uh, we will be able to pay them regularly, but somehow find a way to restructure uh, this $1.6 billion. That was the Minister of Finance, Ken Ofurieta. Now, members of the Pensioner Bondholders Forum will today resume picketing at the Finance Ministry following the failure of government to pay their matured coupons and principles. Three weeks ago, the pensioners held a similar protest demanding the payment of coupons and principles. Following a meeting between the Ministry and the Pensioner Bondholders, the group suspended the action with the promise that all outstanding coupons will be paid while discussions about principal payments continued. Two weeks after the suspension of the protest, the government has failed to engage the pensioners on the way forward on their principles, with four coupons also outstanding. Away from that, the Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber of Telecommunications, Engineer Ken Ashibe, says persons who face genuine challenges while registering their SIM cards should reach out to the National Communications Authority, NCA, for assistance. Wednesday, May 31 was a deadline for the SIM card re-registration exercise and over 9 million subscribers who failed to register their cards have had their SIM cards permanently blocked by the NCA. Engineer Ken Ashigbe said the NCA recognizes that some persons, through no fault of theirs, were unable to complete the exercise and has therefore made provisions for such persons. There are also some concerns about a few people who through no 
fourth of years cannot register. So that includes uh, people who might have applied for the Ghana card, have not received it. So the NT had put this thing out long ago that if you had any reason why you couldn't register, you needed to contact the NTA on all their channels that they have. And then if you then make your case to they would look at it and then would be able to direct the telcos. It's only the NTA that can decide that uh, for a certain reason, uh, Kenneth, you know, Shika, your numbers should not be bad. Uh, from, so the only alternative anybody would have as we speak is to be able to call the NTA and then it provide the evidence to the reason why you cannot do your registration. Otherwise, you will not have access to voice uh, calls, you don't have access to uh, text messages, you will not have access to data services, and your mobile money will be bad. You have, you have about close to 200 million uh, TVs on these uh, accounts that potentially could be impacted. And so what Engineer Ken Ashigbe is the Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber of Telecommunications. To some other news, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Ghana, COPEC, is calling for a full-scale audit to be launched into the power and energy industry to ascertain the veracity of the current debt level of the sector. This comes at a time when the Public Utility Regulatory Commission, PRC, has increased electricity tariff by 18.3% and has since indicated of a further increment any time soon to help defray outstanding debts of the electricity company of Ghana. In an interview with City Business News, the Executive Secretary of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Duncan Amwa, questioned backlog of debt recorded in the power sector. It is quite baffling how Ghanaians continue to be asked to pay more for power every now and then, only to wake up and then you are told we still owe as a country uh, huge sums of money, in excess of 20 billion uh, Ghana City, to the independent power producers. One wonders where the monies we all pay uh, through ECG to be used to pay for services that the IPCs have rendered. One wonders where these monies go. Is it really being given to them or they collect the monies, then people decide to do whatever they want to do with the money? That was the Executive Secretary of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Duncan Amwa. Now on the interbank foreign exchange market where banks trade among themselves, the dollar remained unchanged and is selling at 10 cities 98 pesos. The British pound is selling at 13 cities 60 pesos. It recorded no price change. The euro lost 7 pesos and is selling at 11 cities 70 pesos. However, at some forex bureaus in the capital, the dollar is selling at 11 cities 80 pesos, while the British pound is selling at 14 cities and the euro is going for 12 cities 50 pesos. Let's now join Mark Jordan Sikanati of Data Bank for the latest update on the bonds market. Market activity in government of Ghana bonds was positive in the first two sessions of this week, with a total volume traded of 67.5 million Ghana cities. The new bonds continue to drive market activity, accounting for over 90% of the market turnover in both sessions. The data bank bond index advanced to 80.16 points, with an average yield to maturity of 13.4%. On the primary market this week, the Ghanaian Treasury seeks to raise 2.08 billion Ghana cities, to cover estimated maturities worth 1.98 billion Ghana cities, the auction will focus on the 91-day and the 182-day bills. That was Mark Jordan Sikanati of Data Bank. And that's it for the breakfast edition of the City Business News, proudly brought to you by MTN, Goyle, and powered by your most comprehensive business news website, citybusinessnews.com. I'm Nashika Caesar. Have a good business day. Want to feel energized for more? Fuel up with Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP High Performance Products from Goyle. Our high-grade fuel comes at no extra cost, but with more power. And our Diesel XP, it's low in sulfur, making it an eco-friendly option for your vehicle. Experience high performance and quality with our products. Available everywhere. Choose Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP for an energizing driving experience. <laughs> Good energy. If home is where the heart is, 
Then let's go home, shall we? Let's go where the entertainment is. Where the passion is. Where the love tie is. And sometimes, even the tears too. Let's go where we feel safe enough to share our opinions. And send tweets. Where we do that embarrassing little dance to our favorite song. Let's go home where the love, the care, and the joy live. <laughs> There's no place like home. Connect your home to super fast internet with affordable data bundles from MTN Home. Visit broadband.mtn.com.gh or your My MTN app to sign up today. MTN. This is the City Breakfast Show. The city's biggest conversation. The City Breakfast Show. Rise above the noise. City Business News was brought to us by MTN. With MTN and MCOPA device finance, you can now buy a sleek and trendy smartphone. Enjoy the luxury of paying in amazing, easy daily, weekly, or monthly installment plans. Walk to any of our service centers in Accra, Central, Achimota, Dansoman, Medina, Tudu, or Circle, and choose your favorite from a wide range of mobile phones on offer. The best part is all phones come with two gig free data, so you can share your pictures and get all the biggest scoops online for the first six months after purchase. Kickoff is next brought to us by Lesheho. For over a decade, we've been supporting investment goals of our customers with attractive solutions. With easy access to track your funds, we offer flexible deposit products for 91 day, 182 day, and 365 day. Open a fixed deposit account now. Call us on 057 770 700. The savings and loans, a trusted safe haven for your investments. And the news is also brought to you by Shell Helix, specially designed to bring out the best in your engine, protecting it from wear and tear and providing the performance and power needed to give you the best ride every time. Visit your local Shell station today and experience the difference for yourself. Of his next son and the man Gabby your face in the hot seat. Good morning, Gabby. Hi, hi Bernard. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. What are the big stories? Well, in the headlines, Sevilla champions of the Europa League, a record extending seven title for the Spanish side. Also, Ghana and Nigeria renew rivalry in the final of the Waffles on BU20 tournaments. The Black Princesses are true after beating Burkina Faso in Kumasi yesterday. We've got reactions coming up in a bit. Then in tennis, Serbian top C Novak Djokovic. Join world number one Carlos Alcaraz in the French Open third round as a pair remain on course for a semi final meeting in Paris. Well, my name is Gabby Ophel. Let's set to for the details now. We'll start with some reactions from the Black Stars call up. Well, Executive Council member of the Ghana Football Association, Dr. Randy Abbey, says. The exclusion of local players from Chris Uting's latest 24-man Black Star squad for the 2023 Afghan qualifier against Madagascar should not be a significant cause for worry. Now, despite Uting's diligent observation of the Ghana Premier League throughout the season, none of the players from the local scene were selected. Dr. Randy Abbey believes that the Black Star's technical team's presence at the different uh, uh, league centers is not to identify talent for the senior national team, but also for the other national teams in a broader sense. What I even know about coaching is that sometimes uh, when they monitor uh, the league, it's probably not just for the Black Stars. I mean the senior team. It could be for the Team B. They could, they could even make recommendations for the other national teams. They could see a talent. Maybe he might not be Black Star level at the moment, but. Uh, if they check his uh, stats and perhaps he fits into under 20, under 70, under 23, they could make those recommendations. If um, the player also is somebody who they would want to uh, take a second look at uh, within the context of the Black Stars, they'll do so. If there's a player who they think has potential and they must continue to monitor his progress, they will do so. So 
I think that sometimes we should not expect that because we have seen them. Uh, then um, at all costs, there must be a player. I, I think that they want to succeed. And uh, for them, um, if the players who help them succeed play in Ghana or any part of the world, they will definitely give them the opportunity. All right, so you heard Dr. Randy Abbe, the executive council member of the Ghana Football Association, speaking to uh, City Sports. There. Well, away from that, chief executive officer for Bofokatano, uh, they got promoted into the Premier League. His name is Alexander Vavio. Uh, he's expressed or described the season as a challenging one despite securing promotion to Ghana's top fly league for the first time in 16 years. Now, their qualification marked a significant achievement for the club with suffered relegation after uh, the 2006-2007 campaign. In an interview with City Sports, he expressed his excitement at guiding the team back to the division and also stated that their plans to restructure the technical team and also beef up the squad in a bid to be competitive for the new season. Yeah, right now we have to do some refreshment. We have to get in about uh, five to six players. We add them to our team and then our technical team too we have to be prepared. We have to get in a, a new coach because our coach is a Lancet B coach. He cannot uh, coach the Premier League. So we have to get in a new coach. And apart from that, the management too we have to come together with the board of directors to raise some funds to support the team by paying our players' salaries and other things so that we can move the team forward. When we put up this uh, one we put up this major charting we can say in the Ghana Premier League. All right, so you had CEO for Bofokwatano, Alexander, I will be speaking to CT Sports there. So next uh, attempt for the GPL is set. Um, well, let's do some women's football now. Ghana, uh, they beat Burkina Faso by three goals to one at the Barbara Sports Stadium Kumasi yesterday. Stella Nyamiche, Sasses Ameya, and also Faiza Seidu are getting their goals for the Black Princesses. Let's hear from Black Princess's head coach, Yusuf Bazigi. This is a new team I'm building. And um, putting them together, in fact, uh, will not just be uh, a nine-day wonder. Um, we need to have patience and then prepare the team um, to be a winsome team. Because I'm looking at the constructions of uh, their ball, transition from uh, defense, midfield, and then attack. But it looks like uh, the finishing is now the problem. So it means that is the only area I have to work, even though I have uh, some few lapses at the defense, which I need to augment very well. All right, so that's Black Princess's head coach, Yusuf Bazigi speaking then. So Nigeria, they beat Benin by three goals to zero in the other semi-final class. So the final is set, uh, Ghana v Nigeria on Saturday at the Barbara Sports Stadium. That should be tasty. Let's now head to the Puskas Arena for that final between Sevilla and Ezruma. Anthony Taylor orders a retake and Montiel stares at the prize. Sevilla again and again and again. Once more, the trophy is Andalusia bound. Seven times in 18 years, the prize is their property. Jose Mourinho is beaten in a European final for the first time ever. 20 years since his first triumph with Porto in Seville. It is Sevilla who finally stain his immaculate record. It simply belongs to him. It simply belongs to them. It is a part of Sevilla. This is their happy habit. It is a Rohi Blancos routine. In 2023, the Europa League trophy is going back home. Nobody loves it like Sevilla. All right, so history for Sevilla. A record extending seven titles as they beat Jose Marino's room on penalties after a drab 1 1 draw in Budapest. The Spanish side have now won all seven of their finals they've played in in the competition. What this victory means is that they have qualified for next season's Champions League despite finishing outside the top of four. In the La Liga, let's hear from Jose Luis Mendiliba, the Sevilla manager, after the victory. Well, uh, winning the Europa League after uh, these few games with Sevilla, it's not bad. Uh, I've got everything to thank. Uh, you know, I want to thank my lads for everything they've done for our club. Uh, I want to thank the club for bringing me here. I want to thank the fans. 
you know, for everything they've done for coming over here, for, for supporting us, and of, and of course they're bringing home the prize of their cup, or the trophy. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that we won. I'm happy uh, for the club that, that were struggling when, when we arrived and we've seen, we've done something uh, great and something good for the club. I was super excited for uh, Jose Luis Mandele, but he's a manager for Sevilla. Well, as my head coach Jose Moreno says, his players deserved more in the final against Sevilla. But I want to say this. My players deserve more, and I deserve more. And I want to fight to deserve more, get more. I'm a bit tired of being a coach, a manager, a communications man, of being the face that says we have been robbed. I'm tired of all this. But I want to stay with, if the conditions to give more are there, we won't be playing the Champions League next year. That's good news. It might seem a little paradoxical somehow, but it is a good news because we are still not a team that is worthy of the Champions League. All right, so that's Azuma manager Jose Moreno speaking there. So five reps in next season, ZFA Champions League. Now away from that, former Arsenal defender William Galas has dismissed any hope of his old club contending for the Premier League title next season due to their lack of mental strength and character. Despite coming close this season, Galas, he played for Arsenal from 2006 to 2010, highlighted their failure to capitalise on spending a record-breaking 248 days at the top of the league. Now, Arsenal ultimately finished five points behind champions Manchester City after a late season slump. While Galas has a history of criticizing the club and was stripped off captaincy in 2008. I don't think so. I think this season was their best chance to, to win the Premier League. They were so close. And they make, for me, they make too many mistakes. Maybe not strong enough uh, in their mind. Maybe no few experienced play, players because sometimes you need experienced players, especially in, in some games you have to win. And uh, personality, you know, I think, you know, against Liverpool uh, when they draw at Dunfield, uh, West Ham when they draw there, Southampton at home, you know, you need uh, personality uh, players and they didn't have that personality players. At, at that moment. All right, so that's uh, former Arsenal defender William Galas speaking uh, there. Well, Diego Dalot, he signed a new five-year contract at Manchester United. A Portugal fullback has agreed terms of a new deal that will keep him at Old Trafford on to June 2028 with the option for another year. The 24-year-old has shared the right-back duties with Aaron Juan Bissaka this time, making a total of 42 appearances ahead of the FA Cup final against Manchester City. At Wembley this Saturday. Wrapping up with some tennis updates and Serbia's Novak Djokovic, uh, he's bidding for a men's record 23rd major single titles. He beat Martin Fuxovic 6 7 6 6 0 at uh, 6 3 1 number 1. Uh, Carlos Alcaraz also earlier beat Japan's Taro Daniel 6 1 3 6 6 1 at uh, 6 2. More updates later in our subsequent bulletins. That's all the latest for today. For more stories, you can head to citysportsonline.com. Then later, join us at 10 p.m on City TV for the uh, City Sports Roundup. My name is Gabby Ofer. Take care and bye-bye.